Hello, and welcome back to the Simplifiers podcast, where we take topics in business and in life and simplify them. Now, one topic that I have been wanting to simplify for a long, long time now is talking about our fashion sense and our personal style. And you're going, wait a second, Mary, I got no fashion sense. I got no personal style. What are you talking about? Well, in fact, I believe that your personal style is a huge part of doing business, being out there in the world, being visible and all that. So let's talk about simplifying your wardrobe, making it easier for you to get dressed every morning, and also to start cultivating that personal style in a simple way. So my special guest today is Sarah Jackson. Now, Sarah comes to us with over 20 years experience in the fashion industry as a fashion buyer, and she works as a consultant for fashion brands, enabling them to identify and capitalize on greater business opportunities. In addition, she is a personal stylist helping her busy clients to take the stress out of getting dressed every single day and helping us define our personal style. Sarah is also a lecturer at Nottingham Trent University within the School of Art and Design, focusing on the fashion management marketing and communication degree tracks. She runs style swap events, which are sustainable clothing swap experiences, encouraging women to extend the life cycle of garments and embrace a reuse, rewear, and relove mentality. So I'd like to welcome to the Simplifiers podcast, Sarah Jackson. Hey, Sarah. Hey, Mary. Thanks for inviting me on the podcast. I'm glad you're here. And I think that this is a really important topic. And I could already imagine a couple of my girlfriends listening to this going, uh, yeah, Mary, I don't have a personal style. So where do we begin there? How, how do you define your personal style through fashion? Why is it important? Um, well, I think... Um, when you know, I think it's definitely as we get older as women and we've had children and our body shapes um, change, um, you kind of get become less unsure of what your personal style is. We probably had more of an idea when we were younger. And then, you know, we're busy. We're, we're running a household probably. We're running a, in a business and we've got children maybe. So you lose actually your personal style and who you are comes low on the list. Yeah. Whereas actually exactly what you said in the beginning, it's part of who you are. It's part of your business, your brand and your personal brand. Yeah. Defining your personal style really is what makes you feel good, what you feel you look good in and what you feel good in yourself um not always how you think you other people want you to look or yeah. you, you know other businesses might think you want to look it's how you feel confident so that might be that you have a style formula that you've had for I mean I have have had my style formula probably for the last 10 15 years yes it's evolved but I still love a uh, funky little blouse like this and jeans and some jewelry that's my yeah. go-to look um it evolves but ultimately I have got a formula um, so I think it's actually giving yourself time to revisit it and go back to it and maybe do a bit more analysis on it, um, mm. to define, you know, what is your look that makes you feel comfortable and happy and confident. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, it's about confidence so that when yeah. you step into a sales pitch meeting, when you step on stage to speak at a conference, or you even step into a lunch meeting with a colleague, you want to feel l- comfortable in your skin, comfortable in what you're yeah. wearing and not be wearing something super awkward and weird unless that's really what you love to wear, you know, right? Yeah, totally. And I think confidence is the key. It's a feeling good and feeling confident because yeah. we all know if we, I, I always say this to my personal styling clients, think back to a time when you, you know, you, you loved a certain outfit or you loved the way your hair was. How did you feel at that time? And when you like a certain, ha- you know, the way your hair falls that day or the blouse you've got on um, or the new blazer jacket you've put on with your jeans, it, it gives you inner confidence. And I think it is trying to get that little formula and replicate that formula daily yeah um and so it is about that that waking up in the morning knowing what you're going to put on and being confident in your choices and even if you have a capsule wardrobe which has got five go-to key looks that are all based around three to four items Mm. then actually that's a great formula to have and it's a great um you know part of your working week it's another another thing not to worry about you know it's complicated enough running your own business um and, and being busy so the work I do with my clients almost takes the, takes the stress and the time out of that thought. Mm. Um, and I help them rebrand themselves, re-understand what they love and, and what they love to wear. And then we build a capsule wardrobe again 
together. Yeah. Um, so it just takes the stress out of it for them. Well, I want to definitely dive into how to build a capsule wardrobe and all of that. But before we get there, um, you know, I, I imagine also your personal style will evolve and change over time as well. Like what I was wearing 20 years ago probably is in style <laughs> and at Urban Outfitters right now. Yes. But <laughs> probably not good for, you know, where I'm at right now in my life. Or I honestly don't know if I want to bring that back into my my personal <laughs> style and what I wear in my closet. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's it's a matter of evolving as well and, and, and coming to terms with that, right? Or how, is, do you have any advice there? Totally. I mean, it, you're so accurate in what you're saying because I was at university in the 90s. I'm sure you were similar mm-hmm. to, to me. And when I'm teaching the students now at university, they're all wearing what exactly I was wearing pretty 20 odd years ago. Like everything. And then, <laughs> literally. But 90s trends are really on fashion. Yeah. But it's not about following the fashion. There might be a nod to the trend. And if you think back to some of the 90s fashions, so for example, um, this season, scoop necks and bodies, body suits are in, on trend. But you could wear one of those, whereas back in the day, you might have worn it with a pair of leggings and maybe, yeah. you know, you would have been all fitted. Yeah. But now what's very flattering is you might have your favorite pair of jeans on, which for the cut that suits you, the bodysuit underneath a really cool, well-cut blazer jacket. That's right. So actually it's about adapting that trend to where you are now in your life. Um, and it might be a nod to the trend. Um, for example, Dr. Martin boots have come back in on trend. And so I bought a sleeker um, Chelsea boot version rather than a lace-up because I felt they were more grown up for my 43-year-old self to wear. But back in the day, I would have worn a cherry red lace-up pair that was you know, out there. So yeah. It's kind of a nod to that trend, and then that works with the wardrobe I've got. And I would wear that with a blazer jacket and jeans, which I definitely wouldn't have worn it like that in the 90s. Yeah. So it's looking at how you can adapt a trend to your personal style. And I also dare say that if you if you just buy on the trends and what's fashionable now, it, it will not feel authentic. It will, you know, I mean, unless it really fits, suits you and fits your style and and the way you you know, feel confident in it. But if you're just putting brand on brand on brand on brand of like, oh, I just saw all of this, and so I'm just hoiking it all onto my body it's like oh I just imagine yeah. it would be very awkward and, and it will come across um exactly the opposite of what you're hoping to achieve yeah and a little bit contrived maybe and a little bit out of yes. your own personal style and I think you know um you always want to look like yourself and feel like yourself um but it's just it's just polishing that little bit so it's easier to pull together every day yeah so okay right where do we begin on clarifying your own personal style so when you are walking with a client um as a stylist like what are the first few questions you like to ask him or her so before I do any session with a, a client, I send them a list of questions that I want them to consider before we start. And we always do a consultation before we shop because yeah. it's not about what I like. It's about me understanding them, their mindset, how they want to look and how and when they feel confident. Yep. I've had many different briefs with the clients that I work. Some clients have just go in and cleanse their wardrobe and reorganize it back into outfits. The majority of people I work with, we start with the questionnaire. So within that, we're looking at... Um, does it take me back to a time that you felt really confident? You know, what what was your favorite outfit or what is your favorite outfit right now and why? What do you love about that outfit? Why does it make you feel good? And everybody, even though if they're on a real downer about the way they look in their wardrobe, they can usually come up with an outfit they, they like themselves in. Yeah. And we and, and I try and get behind the nuts and bolts of why they like themselves in the outfit. So we'll build upon that. The other thing that we talk about is um, inspiration. So we live in a world now where 20 years ago it was, it was called copying. Now it's called inspiration. And it's great because we all, <laughs> but it's great because we're inspired by things. And if I was to go and build an, a website for my business tomorrow, I would go and look at other websites I like. It's no different. That's right. you know, if I was going to cook a, a you know, recipe for a cake, I'd go and research what cakes I want to cook. Yeah. It's the same. So I often ask, uh, well, I ask all my clients, who is their style muse? Who do they like? And that could be anybody from someone they work with. It could be their sister. It could be Meghan Markle. It could be many people. Um, And they will show me usually a Pinterest board or an Instagram pinned images of, you know, this is the person I like the way they dress. I like how she puts a blazer jacket with a jean and an ankle or whatever it is they like about that style. Mm. Um, And just real quick on that, um, you know, about, gosh, easily six or seven years ago, I started a Pinterest board um, and I kept it public on my brand's um, Pinterest page as well, which may be a little controversial, but that is just simply, you know, these are the styles that make me feel good. And so, you know, I find that that's really interesting. The reason to keep it public versus private is that I do 
pin things like haircuts or, you know, a blazer jacket or shoes that I love or whatever to there. Because I also am showing and sharing with my audience yeah. and with my clients, like, what is my personal style as yeah. a, a business professional as well? Um, yeah. And I think it's really interesting creating this living and breathing mood board, if you will, to see what I penned five, six, seven yeah. years ago and what still is timeless to who I am and, and my style today. Yeah. And I think that is one benefit of actually being a little bit, a little bit older. Once you get into your thirties, I would say definitely. Mm. There are certain key pieces that I bought in my thirties, um, that I still love today. And that is, for example, a really great ankle boot or a really yeah. great fit pair of jeans. Like I talk about blouses and shirts, blazer jackets. I still pretty much love the ones I've loved 10 years ago. Yes. The styles have updated slightly, yeah. but there are certain investment pieces or capsule wardrobe hero pieces, as I call them, that will live in your wardrobe and can work with five or more items so they will work with lots of different items so often when I do a consultation with people the start point is the questionnaire and then we look in their wardrobe and we identify their hero pieces so what are the pieces that they love and I can go oh gosh we could do lots with that for example or we could Mm -hmm. style that in lots of ways and we identify what those pieces are and then it's not about going out and spending thousands of dollars or pounds on a new wardrobe it's about buying items that will work around the items you have Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. And one item, I don't know, might be a pair of brown ankle boots for summer, would could revolutionise lots of pieces in your wardrobe that you've not been wearing because it gives you lots of new outfit combinations. So it's actually, that's the sort of work that I do with people. That's um, great. Yeah, and so let's dive into the concept of a capsule wardrobe. So where do you begin when you're building one of those for a client or even for yourself? So the start point would be what outfits do I like myself in? Mm-hmm. Um, so if it was myself, I would look at probably four or five outfit combinations that I wear, blouse and jeans with, with heels would be one, yep. you know, a blazer jacket. And a, and I'd look at those combinations, you know, a floral dress with ankle boots and a leather jacket. They, those would be my outfit combinations. So for the customer, my clients, we will look at what outfit combinations they like. And then we will try and build um, outfits around those combinations. Yep. Um, once we've done the um, the shop and we've found the new items, I give my customers a report that is a capsule water report, and it will say, this is outfit number one. This blazer could be worn with this outfit. And it's almost like a mix and match yep. outfit combination report. Yep. So that actually they could study that report as they could like any kind of feedback, you know, could be any, any feedback. And then they can, they could organize their wardrobe that way, or they can have go-to outfits for the season. Yeah. Um, and I think that's the key, right? It's per season. So you might yes. pull 30 pieces um, and mix match all those things together to have, say, two weeks of work outfits. So 10 yeah. outfits, you know, yeah. ready to go at any point. Would yeah. you need more than 30 pieces? Do you have any like ideas there or thoughts? It depends on your work and what you're doing. I think yeah. if you have to be in an office every day, I mean, mm. when I worked in a buying office with young fashion girls, I did like to have different outfit combinations. Yeah. In the work I do now, where I'm working for myself, I'm going out and seeing clients maybe once a week. I'm lecturing once a week. Yep. I don't need as many outfit combinations. So if I was a wedding planner, for example, um, and I, I, it would be, I would need outfits for my sales pitches. Yep. And then on the day of the events... So it all depends how many you need, really. Right. But you can be very clever with that capsule wardrobe because uh, a scarf or some jewellery or different footwear could update something, you know, a different jacket to wear over a dress or a little cardigan. There's different out- options that can update different pieces. So you'd be quite, you'd be quite um, amazed by how many combinations you can pick from from the outfits, you, from the items you have. Totally. And, you know, I always get inspired when I do see capsule wardrobe um, samples on Pinterest because I go, oh, actually, ah, you know, I totally yeah. have all these pieces already. Yeah, yeah. Like you forget that you you have yeah. the basic white tee, you have the really nice blazer, yeah. you have the clean, polished cut of dark blue jeans or whatever. Yeah. You, you don't remember, you know, and because, and I'll, I'll be the first to admit, um, though I have culled my wardrobe over the years, is that you just have it all crammed in there so yeah. it's it's like you can't even see through yeah. the forest of all the stuff so would you recommend that we pull it all out first and then yeah. start to intentionally put things back in bit by bit or how yeah, else would is, you do it well, it depends on what the customer wants but yeah that's the best way to do it is to yeah. actually pull out and start from scratch but um what we often do is do a wardrobe cleanse yep. so in when we're identifying the hero items mm-hmm. we're also 
weeding out the things that, you know, what I haven't worn in six months, I haven't worn for a year. A lot of the items, especially with the women clients, and it's the same with me, is I love this, but it just doesn't fit me anymore. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And you've held on to it. I've got things I held on to since pre-kids, but they don't fit me in the same way now. And it's so, so hard to let yeah. those go <laughs> because it's yeah. got such a sentimental or yeah. emotional tie to it. Yeah. Oh, I'm the worst with t-shirts personally, but yes, carry on. Some things you will keep for sentimental value, of course. Yeah. Um, but it is really good to weed those out and give them to somebody else who can wear them or a charity shop or a clothes swap, which we'll come on to. Yeah. So, Because somebody else could get joy out of that item and it's just sat hanging in your wardrobe and it wasn't manufactured to hang in someone's wardrobe. So we weed out the things that you aren't going to wear. Put uh, We put together the items that make uh, outfits. Mm-hmm. Um, customers like them either hanging in outfits. Mm-hmm. Personally, I like mine hung in categories. So I like all my blouses together, or my bottoms together, or my bl- jackets together. That's how I'm used to building. Some yeah, people like cool. my color. So we can work out which way you want your wardrobe or closet hanging. And then from that, I will create a shopping list. And we'll either go to the shops and shop for that list, or I will do it as a digital hyperlink list, mm-hmm. which I can do with people remotely, um, which would be my shopping list of recommendations of out- items that will bolster what they already have and create a better working capsule wardrobe for that season and when we say season it's you know spring summer and autumn winter because obviously for the seasons changing you need to update your footwear your your totally. color scheme or your your layering yeah um yeah I, I suggest no. I, say, I suggest people do it at the start of a new season change um and even if they're not working with someone like me they just go into their wardrobe they give themselves a half an afternoon or an evening pull out of their wardrobe um, and try on the things you've got, work out the gaps, work out the things you love. Yeah. So it sounds like to me, it, it makes a lot of sense in my mind. And this is certainly how my closet is organized as well by category. So blouses, trousers, jeans, sweaters, all of the things. Um, but it also sounds to me like to take that one step further is exactly what you're saying. Is like maybe once you've built the outfit combinations, um, if you're working with a personal stylist like like Sarah, she's going to do all this heavy lifting for you. But if yeah. you're just trying to do it yourself, yeah. you put out your outfit combinations, snap a few photos on your phone, and then print those and like post them <laughs> inside your closet door. Because oh. then it's like it takes all the thinking out of Absolutely. it. You're like, I've already figured this out. It's here. Dung, 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 dung. Yeah. Grab, grab, grab. Go, go, go. Right? Yeah. I'll have it on your phone as, um, as a Pinterest feed, uh, on a Pinterest board. You put them there. Um, or just have them on your phone as a board. But actually... Take, it's like I said to you before, it's like if you were doing a dinner party for someone, you probably wouldn't do a dish and you'd not practice cooking the recipe before. Right. You can't probably expect to just pull an outfit together as you're rushing out the door in the morning. It just doesn't come together like that. It might do, but for most people, it doesn't. It doesn't for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I've always planned what I'm going to wear the night before, always. Yeah. They always think, where am I going tomorrow? What is the meeting? What am I trying to get out of the meeting? What do I need to look like? How do I need to feel inside at that meeting? Yeah. Um, and pulled out the outfit. But Prior to that, at the beginning of the season, I've tried on different outfit combinations. I used to just write lists in my iPhone and take photos of outfit combinations. Yeah. Um, and then I'd write a shopping list of the gaps of the things I needed for the season. Um, so it's always a, a working list. And you could then hang your wardrobe in working capsule outfits, off-duty you know, capsule outfits if you wanted to. Some customers right. like that. Right. Well, yeah. And and I think that more and more these days, um, especially for small business owners, we're working from home, we're isolated, we're kind of in our bubble, and we might be dressing from the top up. I promise I'm wearing trousers right now during this interview. (laughs) But you know, I mean, truly, like you sometimes dress from the top up because you're like, well, I'm only on camera from here up. But you know, I think that there is something to actually dressing in a way that makes you feel confident, regardless of if you're seeing people that day or not, because it will change how you sit at your desk. It will change how you yeah. type up those emails. It will yeah. change and, and influence how you write your sales pitch or price your stuff. Because if you okay. feel like you're a scrub, you might come across as yeah. a scrub. Um, yeah. That sounds harsh, but that you know what I'm saying, right? Totally. And I, I've done it where I go for a run after I've dropped the kids off at school and I stay in, sometimes stay in my gym kit um, yeah. all day. And I do, I feel, by the end of the day, I feel dreadful and I feel better if I get in the shower straight away afterwards, put a bit of makeup on, put, you know, yeah. um, and then sit at my desk. It, it's so true. Yeah. Um, and then that would be different again from the sort of outfit I'd wear if I was going to a business meeting or if I'm doing a lecture and I'm stood up in front of an auditorium of 150 fashion students. That's right. Then I really think, what, what am I going to wear for that, you know? Um, so it's all premeditated and thought through so that I know I'm the best I can be on that day. 
day in that meeting. Yeah. And that, I think, again, it comes back to being intentional, um, thinking about strategically where you're headed in throughout the day. I mean, I think about that too. Like uh, if I'm going to the gym uh, first thing in the morning, of course I'm putting on gym clothes, but I'm also thinking about the rest of my day and, and how it's mapping out so that I'm not wearing five outfits in a day, but I'm also maybe ch- interchanging one piece or another to focus or to be best for whatever that particular work function is yeah it's like it's like writing notes for a meeting isn't it preparing for a meeting it's the same thing it's the same kind of preparation it's just visual preparation so can we shift gears a little and talk about colors what do you feel is best colors for certain situations or thoughts on colors in general so um, colours, I think you definitely have a palette that suits you mm-hmm. generally. Yeah. Um, so, for example, I know with myself, um, warmer colours do suit me just because of my skin tone. Yep. Um, so knowing what colours suit you. But then different colours give it different meanings. So, for example, blue is seen to be intelligent, trustworthy, honest, efficient and quite tranquil. Mm. So people say that blue is a good colour to wear for a job interview. Um you know, it, it gives across that kind of um, integrity, I would say, yeah. as a colour. And that's all levels of blue, actually. Um, so it's quite a good workwear colour. Hmm. For me personally, I have um, several navy blazers. I love a navy blazer and I would wear it with a blouse or a T-shirt with jeans and heels. And I think that's a, quite a fail-safe look, if I'm honest. Yep. Um, also, black is seen as intelligent and um, powerful and prestige. Um, black is also very slimming. You know, mm. it really is. And I think with black, the key is to wear maybe a black dress or a black blouse and black leather trousers, but then maybe put a color on over it, yeah. you know? So you can mix it, you know, navy and black, gray and black, or even a bright pop of color. Mm-hmm. Or maybe some chunky statement jewelry would dress up black. Or a scarf um, or something like or that. S- yep. Exactly. You know, mm-hmm. totally that. Add some prints to it. Or maybe a colored ankle boot or something, you know, would, would, would uplift that. Then when you get the really vibrant colors like reds and oranges and pinks, they're giving you energy, they're giving you movement, they're giving you excitement and often creativity. And they seem to be quite feminine, those warm colors, um, which I would definitely you know, agree with. More earthy colors like greens and browns, um, they're giving you much more reliable kind of um, stable kind of, um, you know, in terms of how you're, you're giving out a vibe. Yeah. Um, so color definitely dresses to your mood, but also what you're trying to get across in that meeting yeah um you know if I, I know if I'm looking at product and I'm looking at spring summer I'm talking about a, um something to, to do with um femininity or a color I would always wear a brighter color um but I tend to wear um when I'm going to the university with the students I tend to wear a lot of more darker colors actually mm. um because I don't want them to think I'm dressing like them so that's I have psychology behind I dress you know for those sort of meetings yeah because you're the expert on stage you're you're the yeah. mentor they're the student so I think yeah. there is some, some things of just even taking a pause and going okay what big meetings do I have this week that I really need to look polished I need to feel confident walking in the very first impression uh, you know knock them dead and yeah. so think about that and then think about what's in your closet currently because I think also Sarah I know this about you is that you're not asking people or telling people to go out and spend loads of money, you actually, um, a lot of the pieces you have already probably exist in your closet. And if they don't, then this is the trend that is happening all over the world. And I know that you're doing it here in Nottingham is starting to find sustainable, ethical clothing swaps where women just like you are uh, coming together, having a bottle of of champagne and, you know, styling and and exchanging quality pieces. So talk to us about what you do with your clothing swaps. So um, I set up a clothes swapping business uh, about ooh, uh, just over a year ago yep. called Style Swap Events. So um, just to rewind as to why that happened. So I've worked in the fashion industry for 20 years, like I said. And in my time, being very honest, I've been a, a massive over-consumer of fashion. Sure. Um, so imagine I worked in the fashion industry. I constantly was updating my wardrobe, feeling like I had to be in the latest trends. And um, I feel like my attitudes to all that has shifted, but also within the industry and within the market generally, there is a change. And we are really, thankfully, now looking at protecting our planet. Um, the fashion industry is the second biggest polluting industry behind the oil and gas industry. So when you, and I've been to a lot of factories, I've, I did the manufacturing side of, you know, of buying ranges for high yeah. street retailers. You know, it, there's a lot of pollution that comes out of clothing production. People don't think about how, yeah, things arrive in store. And also, I don't think the general consumer understands the quantities that businesses are placing. You know, we would place on one top 30,000, 40,000 units of a style. And H&M and Zara will be placing a lot bigger than that. So imagine what it takes to produce those garments. So think about a pair of jeans to grow the cotton, to water the cotton, to then 
knit it to all the fibers that then come out to the washing of it um to then the transporting of it from china to all the stores there's a there's a poor carbon footprint with that yeah um so i was quite mindful of this and if you look in some of the stats from greenpeace um generally globally we're consuming twice as much fashion as we were in the year 2000 but we're wearing it and keeping it half as long Mm -hmm. um here in the uk there's 30 billion pounds of clothes just hanging in wardrobes not being worn and it got me thinking, I read a lot about this, um, and I walked past a window in Portobello Road Market, and it was, it, it was about re-wearing, re-sharing. And I thought about my network of women, um, and I thought about all the things I have in my wardrobe that I don't wear, but then what my friends have, and then colleagues or people I've met, having their wardrobes that they're not wearing that I might like to wear. So could we share things? Could we swap things? Um, and I looked at clothes swaps in London. So I set up a clothes swapping business, and I've done about, um, gosh, about eight or nine events now. Yep where women buy tickets, they come along to the event, usually on an evening, like you said, in a nice venue. They have a glass of Prosecco on arrival. They give me up to 15 items of clothing from their wardrobes. And these items are items that are in good condition, but they no longer wear. Yep. Often it's things that don't fit them anymore or you know, yeah. they, they made a, a, a bad decision buying something and then went off it. They bring those items. We mix them all anonymously on rails. They're put together by category, by size. And then all the women can come in and they can take from the rails whatever they want, basically. Like whatever they brought with them. So if they brought 10 pieces of clothes, they can take up to 10 pieces of clothes with them if they wanted. Yeah, we don't always police it down to the items. But yeah, Yeah. usually people take around what they they brought. So the idea of it is that you cleanse your wardrobe, which is great for yourself. um, And then you update your wardrobe with some items that are pre-loved, but, you know, barely worn. And you're extending the life cycle of that garment rather than it being that statistic that is just hung in a wardrobe. You know, the average garment is being worn three to four times. Garments are built to last. They're not built to be worn three or four times and then be put to one side. So it's kind of a bit of an antidote to fast fashion. It's not about not shopping. It's just about slowing down our fashion consumption. And um, ladies who come to the event say that when they've been to the event and they come home with a few bags of items, they come home with 10 items, they've got their fashion hit a little bit and they might prevent them from shopping quite as much over the next few months to come. So it's kind of like we're so good at recycling our um, rubbish, our trash, as you call it in America, Mm -hmm. where we're so good at recycling trash. This is fashion recycling. That's all it is. And we all need to get better at recycling our fashion. And if we're not going to swap it with people, then we should take it to a charity shop. We should donate it to somewhere. You know, we shouldn't just let it hang in our wardrobe. Somebody else can get pleasure out of that garment. And it's purely about that, extending the life cycle of garments. Yeah, well, I'll put a link in the show notes for people that are local to the UK. Um, so you can check out some of Sarah's uh, upcoming styling swaps, um, style swap events. And, you know, hopefully you can come and, and check those out. But then also, if you're listening anywhere around the world, I'm willing to bet there is something like this that exists in your city right now. So if you did a search on Eventbrite or Facebook, yeah. I'm likely that you'll be able to find that. But I also think that there is something even more to that is the ability to connect with other like-minded women, yeah. business professionals, and otherwise. Um, I love that part of it, building community and, and just shopping more ethically and, again, reducing the amount of fast fashion that's out there. Yeah, and I think it's, it's also about questioning everything you buy and just being mindful with what you buy. And when yes. you buy something next time, just question yourself, do I love it? Can I wear it with other items in my wardrobe? Will I wear it on more than one, of a, one occasion? Yep. And if you're unsure about something, don't buy it, you know, because uh, if you're unsure, but buy it if you love it. It's not about not buying new. It's just about being more mindful with your purchases. Yeah. So again, you can check out the show notes at the simplifierspodcast.com to see the details on um, her upcoming events, which are, we've got one coming up on February 7th, right? And then another on Sunday, March 3rd, 2020 in Nottingham. Um, also, if you are curious to work with her as a personal stylist, I'm assuming you can also work with people online as well or is it all just in person? I I have mainly done it in person, but I'm sure that I could do tutorials with people remotely um, via Skype, you know, um, and I could also understand their wardrobes and send them hyperlink shopping lists and things like that. So yes, I could be able to work with people remotely. Fabulous. So um, Sarah has offered a great little discount for our listeners. You get 10% off um, any personal styling work that comes through the simplifiers. Just make sure to mention a promo code simply 10. And again, all the links are in the show notes. So Sarah, I have a few few questions I'd like to ask you that we ask everybody that comes on to the podcast. First and foremost, what is one book or blog that you're reading these days that is either inspiring you or poking holes and challenging your belief system? 
Um, so the book that I read last year, actually, and the podcast I listened to is How to Fail by Elizabeth Day, which I think was a really, really good book. Yeah. You probably know it as well, yeah? Yeah. Um, a really, really great book and really made me reflect on not the failures, but the things that have happened in my life that I've learned from. And you, it really made challenged my, my belief system in terms of, you know, you, it's actually better to do things wrong in a way, to learn and do it better the next time. Yeah. And I also learned a lot from my parenting as well with it, like, you know, you know, with the kids, you know, yeah. and I think in this world we live in as well, people feel like they have to do everything perfectly and life isn't like that. I thought it was a really, really good book and I really enjoyed reading it. Excellent. Okay. We'll put a link in the show notes for that book as well. Uh, yeah. So you guys can check it out. Now tell us who is one person in your network, somebody that you know personally, you just feel is up to brilliant things right now and we can shine a spotlight on them and who knows, maybe one day we'll have them on the podcast. I've got a close friend who's um, an interior designer, actually, and she has set up her own business ooh, a year ago after having quite a long time out with children, um, Hilary Marconetto Interiors, and she has got excellent um, interior style. She's quite quirky, and she'll try different things, and um, she gave me the confidence to paint my dining room this dark, you know, dark blue color, but to yes. try different things. Um, so she's, I find her style quite inspiring um, in terms of interior style. So she's a good one to follow. I love it. And you know, I think fashion also blends into interior design. It's yeah. all part of your personal style. Cause if you're not wearing the clothes that make you feel good and living in a house that makes you feel good, then, you know, it just kind of like, what's the point? Then yeah. you're not truly living an authentic life. Yeah. So I believe gratitude and simplicity go hand in hand. Tell me what's one thing you're grateful for these days? Oh, I'm really grateful for my health always. Cause without our health um you know life is difficult yeah. um and definitely the people around me because um I'm every day I wake up and I'm I feel gratitude that I have my children and my husband and yeah. you know um where we live and having that around me gave me the confidence to leave my corporate job and work for myself and try something different I think without that support system around me and that network I probably wouldn't have had the confidence to do that so I'm very very grateful every single day for that yeah. And again, Sarah can be found at her website, myfashionforecast.co.uk. Um, and then where do you hang out online? Is there any place where we can find you the most to connect? Um, Instagram, I have um, uh, at my fashion forecast, which is my Instagram handle where I post styling tips and daily outfits yep. and different shopping things. I also post about the events that I'm working on. I also have my clothes swap um, handle, which is at style swap events, mm -hmm. style swap events. And that talks about all the events. And if you're very interested to see clothes swaps, my first event is it's sold out now, but it's the 19th of January, this Sunday. Yeah. We always post live videos and videos from the clothes swap. So again, to listeners um, listening elsewhere in the world, they can watch this, they can get inspiration and they can have their own clothes swaps or find out where events are happening. Um, if they take a look at that, that Instagram page. Brilliant. Okay. We'll put all the links in the show notes. So Sarah, my last question for you is today is somebody somewhere is listening to this episode. She's thinking about her personal style. She's going, well, Mary, I just wear yoga pants all day and <laughs> that's about it. But she is curious. She's thinking about it and she wants to do an audit of her wardrobe and her clothes. What's one thing you could whisper into her ear right now just to encourage her in this moment? I think that um, give herself the time to do it. Like don't put it to the bottom of the list because the reason you don't go into your wardrobe and try everything on and, and, and cleanse it and then write down a list of what you want is because you don't have time or it comes down to time. Yeah. Other things are coming as a priority. But ask yourself if you're a business owner, would you let your, would you let your website not be updated for four years you know would you let your business cards or, or your logo you know not, not, not be updated if it needed it your personal branding who you are and the way you project yourself is just as important as your website landing page or your um, business card or your uh, social media feed so you spend time planning that and investing time in that invest time in yourself and your personal branding and in your wardrobe give yourself that half day sign yourself out out of office I'm going upstairs and I'm going to try on my clothes and decide what I want to wear. I'm going to look on Instagram at outfits I like and I'm going to try and recreate them with what I have, exactly yeah. to your point. Give yourself that time. And once you do it every season, it will become part of your routine and it won't be such a big job like anything. Mm. Sarah, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I've really enjoyed it. 